we'll start. Cool. Um, well, hello, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on a Sunday at four o'clock, which I know, uh, especially for students, I mean, I would be down the pub. So uh, thanks for joining. Um, I guess, you know, I've been invited to this talk. So I'm going to talk about my kind of experiences at PwC, Goldman, HSBC, um, kind of how I got them all, processes. And then I think, I think this is there time at the end for Q&A, yeah? So I think, I think we'll do some Q&A. Um, PwC have also asked me to share some slides about their recruitment process as well. Um, so I don't know, some useful links and some insight for that. Um, so yeah, next slide, please, Ollie. Cool. So I guess I'll give a bit of background. So um, did my A-levels, did a gap year, and then went to Lancaster. Uh, Lancaster did a placement year. That's where I was at Goldman Sachs. And then I was also a society president. Um, but kind of before becoming society president of the Investment and Finance Society, um, I was basically trying to just get any sort of experience. So I was doing lots of kind of like the, they had at Lancaster something called the Gozel Fund, which is kind of student led investment fund. So I was getting experience in that. Uh, the, the university was also very good at taking us down to London and doing like insight days at uh, Deutsche Bank, uh, Goldman's and various other places and that helped me kind of build up some experience on my cv um and as well before i talk into like the first experience that first summer uh, i didn't have any spring weeks or anything i should bear in mind um i basically just made sure i got some office work during the summer of my first year so I literally just reached out to like a random recruitment firm like generally no, nothing to do with like student special specialism or anything and just said asked if they had any office work um got some office work and that really stood me in good stead because obviously everyone around me was panicking if they didn't have a spring week and then was also thinking they had to get an investment banking um summer in their first year or some sort of experience and obviously most people aren't going to get that so i'd say the kind of core thing is just get some experience on your cv it doesn't have to be um you know goldman sachs ibd m a uh, just get something whether you work in like a your local post office or something just make sure you're doing something where you can basically say you've worked on microsoft excel and powerpoint um and whatever forms and you can basically on your cv just big it up essentially so you can you can kind of stretch out what you did so for example for me in that summer i basically worked in a logistics firm and basically handled all of their kind of outbounds, the offices, so just coordinated um, kind of where parcels are being sent from like an admin perspective and dealing with like the customer accounts. And so I kind of really pulled that out and kind of, you know, like, you know, demonstrated clear communication to prestigious clients. So you know I mean, really kind of elaborated and buffed it up. Um, so that essentially that's what you need to do is just get some sort of office experience. Uh, go on to the next slide, please, Ollie. So uh, this is a summer intern. So this, so let me let me give you a bit of background. So basically, I did. I was at Lancaster. Did two years at Lancaster, just doing business administration. Did a placement year at Goldman, which I'll come on to next. And then I did in my final year, I did a summer at HSBC. So this is an investment banking. And uh, then I basically because I converted that. That's for this July. I then in the meantime worked at PwC. So I'll just talk quickly through HSBC. So what I was doing at HSBC is, I don't know if everyone knows about different investment banks and all the rest of it, but HSBC is kind of known for being a relationship bank. So in order to basically get big kind of deals through, HSBC lend their balance sheet. And so what they're kind of known for is having relationship managers. The relationship managers own the relationship, whether it's with you know Coca-Cola, um, you know some big multinationals and then that relationship manager basically pulls in all the product teams to so MA, ECM, DCM and then that relationship manager is working on all those deals alongside um, the various product teams so you could have an MA transaction alongside like a debt um, capital markets issuance like a bond issuance and so as a relationship manager you're working on both and it's kind of like sort of a unique role within HSBC's investment bank so that's what I was doing um, just because, I mean, I'm doing M&A at the minute, you're kind of an Excel and PowerPoint monkey. I'd kind of, I wanted much more kind of in client interactions. That's why I did at uh, HSBC. So it was just basically attending client calls, working on kind of multiple deals for the same client. So it's better because you kind of get a broader experience if you get, get the gist because you're working M&A and ECM and DCM. I mean, you're not going to have as proactive role as say an analyst in ECM, which is equity capital markets, I should say, and debt capital markets of DCM. Um, but you are getting kind of an overview of all of this and this experience. 
um, and the hours can be a bit more relaxed. Like you just, just I was still working till like 3 a.m. Um, some nights, but a lot less regularly than my m a colleagues who basically were just flat out. If they got any time to rest, they had their like phone next to their head. So then the associate or the VP would just call them whatever, whatever time of the day, whether it's four in the morning or whatever. Um, so it goes to show what m a is not, uh, not for everybody. Uh, so this relationship management role in the investment bank, that, that's what I've converted. So I'll just quickly talk through the application process. Um, so I think I applied around September. So it's key, you need to be like very, very, very early doors, kind of monitoring when everything opens, get in early doors, um, had an initial like application process, which is like, you know, your standard CV, all the sort of information. Then you had some sort of like online immersive assessment, which was basically kind of like the general behavioral kind of questions, you know, or Bob says this to you, how do you respond to Bob? Or Sarah needs this and you've got all this on, how do you respond to Sarah? Um, so it's really just seeing how you kind of manage deadlines. Uh, and I think the key for those type of interviews or quizzes or whatever you want to call them is to really kind of think um, what the bank's trying to get out of the question. So it's basically trying to get, can you manage your workloads? Can you talk to people in a professional way? Um, those types of things rather than, you know, um, and yeah, Ollie's just linked in actually like specifically what I've got if you're interested in that so that's, that's something to bear in mind the online immersive assessment this is actually like more on the job stuff so you'd have a video and then you'd have to write like a client report um, or the client asks for advice on this how do you respond it's actually a bit more technical that's probably more the technical um, aspect but again it's not super technical but you definitely do need to to know your stuff so the client says oh you know um someone's thinking of a hostile takeover how do i defend myself that could be a question you've got to write like an essay then like <laughs> here's how we advise the client we do this we do that we do this um and obviously that can be quite daunting especially if you're not from a finance background i mean i was in business management and so didn't have specific um super niche finance experience in terms of like everyday courses so glassdoor i find is the best because you can get the question then once you produce a list of the questions of everything, everything everyone said on Glassdoor in relation to the role, you can just go and research it. So when it comes up, you've got all your notes and just you know bash it out. And then you have the assessment center. Um, again, I think so that's kind of like directors. So HS, the way HSBC structures, they have like analysts. Uh, then you have like associates. Then you have something called associate directors, which is basically VP. And then you have directors. And then you have top level, which is managing directors. Um, and so you had like those directors just below managing directors. So, you know, some serious, serious people, um, they do kind of like behavioral. So like, you know, tell us about yourself. Why do you think you're a good fit? All of that type of stuff. Uh, and there's, well, as technical questions um, and then also kind of commercial. This was a bit niche to HSBC commercial questions. So um, how do you think HSBC is positioned in the market? How do you think HSBC can win more customers within investment banking? Um, those types of things. Um, and so that is, is, is key, again, critical on the assessment center point, go on Glassdoor and have a look at the questions. And then also what I found was I literally just went on LinkedIn and just had a look, right, who's actually got it? Who's converted the summer? Popped them a message, maybe 10 of them. You know, most people reply and you get bits of advice from all of them. Um, and so even if you're not, you know, in the questions, you, you don't know, think, you, you know, you're not necessarily completely... 100% on a certain question, you have a good idea of what's going to be asked uh, and you can take it from there. And then I think it's also important if you don't know what, <laughs> to, you know, to say this, it said, for example, they said, you know, give me some kind of credit measures. That's what I got asked. I knew some bits and bobs, um, but I wasn't, didn't know near the extent at which, you know, the director knew. And so I think you should say, here's my understanding, go X, Y, Z. Um, and but I look forward to learning more in this internship it really kind of makes out that you're actually humble enough to go I'm not gonna you know bullshit here and just chat rubbish um you know here's the extent of my understanding but I'm actually keen to learn more rather than what most people do is get flustered and just make up a bunch of rubbish um bear in mind the director's probably been doing the job for like 20 odd years so if you just make up a bunch of random stuff it's not gonna look very good um so yeah I'm, I'm, I guess that's kind of the overview of HSBC happy to kind of talk through that in the q and I'll talk through uh Goldman's this is my placement here so in Goldman applied for internal audit. So this was strategic, right? Because Goldman don't do a lot of placement years, say an IBD or um, 
asset management and all the rest of it, they do like certain areas. Now internal audit, no one's ever really heard of internal audit. And obviously I'd only had like, you know, logistics office experience when I was applying for this in my second year. So this was my third year kind of out, like almost a placement year out from uni, industrial placement. Um, no one had essentially, you know, I didn't have the appropriate experience to go, I want to do private wealth management. So I knew the internal audit, no one really heard of it. No one's really going to apply for it. Um, so did a strategic application. Now, Goldman allow you to apply for up to three roles. It's really important you only apply for one because they all get the same cover letter. So if you and your cover letter, you're going, I'm really keen about investment banking and I'm also really keen about asset management and I'm also really keen about um, investment research, you're not really going to, Put yourself on the best foot um you're better off just picking one um other banks have separate application processes so like you know the investment bank is not going to know you applied for asset management um but for goldman specifically do not um apply <laughs> for all three would be my advice so i made a, a cover letter literally just researched <laughs> internal audit put a bunch of buzzwords in uh, made it look really good had friends read over it and you know got me um, a virtual interview, which was quite stressful because that was, I got, I think I got it through on the 23rd of December and it was due for handing on the 24th. So literally Christmas Eve, we're doing this uh, virtual interview. Again, Glassdoor helps. There was like one technical question, all the rest of it were just general, generic, you know. Give me an example of working in a team, um, explain a difficult task that you've worked on, all these type of kind of like, you know, generic questions, which you can prepare a response for very easily. Um, technical questions, I, I think it was like, explain the impact of Brexit on internal audit. Um, so very light, really. Um, again, Ollie's linked below specifically that on our gen, so you can read through that. Um, you know, not really that stress. So I think for those, those type of video interviews specifically, it's important to be succinct. So no kind of erms or, uh, you know, ors or, you know, kind of stutters. Be very kind of succinct and clear. And you also get like a minute or two. So just write out like a structured response, right? Point A, point B, point C. And then always conclude it, like try and conclude it, wrap it up quite slowly. Thank you very much for your time for listening to this interview. I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, thank you. All the best. You know, very succinct at the end, because most people are just going to stutter, talk a million miles an hour. And the person that's got to actually sit down and watch those um, video interviews is just going to be bored or just put off. If they hear someone calm and collected and knows, you know, sort of what they're talking about, they're just going to put you through. Uh, the final interview was grilling a bunch of VPs. Uh, again, that was like, like Goldman's known for this technical interviews are just absolutely crazy at Goldman um so just make sure you're prepared to nine to so internal audit I was getting asked niche areas of law I mean I'd never I'd never even studied anything to do with internal audit before but I knew about Subrains, Oxley, Mifid 2, um, Basel 3, all of the kind of capital requirements what the role of internal audit is all of this stuff has stood me out got the got the job uh then on the job I was focused on um I was focused on basically leverage finance and investment banking in France. Um, so that was kind of with a side of risk as well. So you got to kind of basically copy what the investment bankers are doing and check it for errors. Is it more or less what internal audit did and then write a report that goes to regulator? Um, for me, it wasn't the most appealing job. Like it's quite laborious, working late hours. Um, you know, I mean, very good people, very intelligent people and nice people, but... I wanted to be in investment banking to go from internal audit to investment banking is very hard. And also Goldman Sachs investment banking, like everyone there has done about four internships before they get the Goldman Sachs investment banking internship. They're like fluent in about five languages um, and they've probably never made a mistake in their life. Um, so you're really talking about like the upper echelons of perfection like, in talent. Um, so, you know, it made much more sense for me to basically not go back to Goldman, and go to kind of, well, I converted obviously HSBC. So I'm going to go back there in July. Um, but in the interim, get yeah, PwC as a grad role because I think I found out I got a return offer from, from uh, HSBC in about uh, end, like start of October in um, 2021, even though bear in mind you finished the internship in like August. And so, like, I just didn't want to run any risk. So, like, I made sure that I had the internship for HSBC and a grad role uh, in M&A, hence why I went um, to PwC. Next slide, please, Ollie. Uh, just kind of link this in. So basically, 
let me let me talk you through the logistics of this then. So done two years at Lancaster, placement year at Goldman, came back in my kind of third year stroke fourth year because of the placement year, um, decided I want a summer internship specifically within IB, um, hence the HSBC application, got the summer. Um, but also I didn't want to, I wanted to hedge my bets. So I got a grad role at PwC and uh, um, advisory, which also, it sounds easier to get, but I think they hired, they got over 30,000 applications and they hired about 20. No, sorry, they hired 10. They hired 10. Um, and then within that, they took, blimey, like three, three or something, two or three for m and So, you know, you, you're talking, you know, again, like <laughs> PwC is easier to get into, I would say, than Goldman Sachs. But, you know, again, <laughs> they took hardly anyone. Um, so I'll, I'll talk through this. I, I'd got that grad role as kind of a hedge um, and also something to do between the, you know, doing the summer at HSBC and then joining again in July. Um, so I've been doing basically TMT M&A, which is basically technology, media and telecoms group within um, their M&A arm uh, at PwC. And again, the people are really nice. Lots of interesting deals. Um, transaction size is between like 30 million to 250 million. So, you know, lots of interesting deals. Um, I'll just talk through the application process. So did, again, send your CV in, all of that. And then what's actually... Um, I think the video interview, I should say, it comes after the careers unlocked. So you do your situational judgment um, test, which is basically, um, yeah, again, behaviours. Bill, Bill is upset. He's got too much work on. What did you say to Bill? You've got four options. Or Janet needs you to do some work, but you've currently got an awful lot on. How do you manage Janet's expectations? All of that, you know, fairly easy. The difficult one is the careers unlocked. Uh, that's basically an app. And it is the most stressful app I've ever <laughs> had to do a, a test on because the, the, you play games and the games, again, Ollie's linked below on our gen, kind of the full summary you can go for a read. And it's quite stressful. Like you'll, you'll have like, I remember one where it was like you had some balloons and you, if you blow up the balloon, you get like increase the value of the balloon by like 10 pence or something. And then you can either choose to cash it out or at any moment, for no apparent reason it just blows up and you get zero and so it's, that's looking to like test your risk appetite um there are another ones like testing memory where it's like colors light up on a grid and then you have to like type in the order of the colors but it gets quite long like up to like 17 in a row and the grid's like quite big like um like four by four so you're talking like 16 squares you've got to memorize the order for those types of stuff you can obviously help yourself and you can kind of you know, kind of jot down the order. That's why I'd say definitely get a pen and paper for those those games where there's anything to do with memory or work something out because if you don't, then you're just putting yourself at a disadvantage. But again, that's very hard. Most people actually fail that. I think it's kind of tied in with some sort of IQ metrics as well because hardly anyone gets through then to the video interview, um, which again is just very pretty much the same as Goldman, like a bunch of generic, kind of behavioral questions followed by like one or two technical questions uh, as long as you're clear precise and accurate you're going to get in assessment center this is the tricky one so in person you would basically rock up to a pwc office they give you each laptops and then on the laptops you get an email to schedule and rooms to attend and then you also are meant to get emails coming through for tasks so like i think one was like you had to write a report um you had to like answer some emails on some like I don't know, there's like some sort of weird maths questions you were getting asked. It was like situational, like Bill Bloggs is, you know, doing a, wants some advice on some sort of cycle client, needs to optimize X, Y, Z, give him an answer. General like stuff that would take like 10 minutes, but you've got to like be accurate, make sure your maths is right. Then there was like some sort of team one um, where you basically got to come together on a decision as a team and present to a panel. Again, with that, just make sure you're like polite and you know give good feedback and include everyone in the conversation um, and then you also have like an actual interview a technical interview but it wasn't super technical again all the answers on Glassdoor that's if it's in office I think I'm not sure if it's virtual still or it's in the office virtual it's kind of like the same so you log on you get given like a separate email tab which gives you like creates a fake PwC email for you where you'll get emails coming through and the recruiters email you on that to say your interview scheduled for like 
I don't know, 12 o'clock today, please click this Zoom link um, to attend. And so what they're trying to really get out of is, can you do tasks? Can you interview well? And can you, can you manage your time? They're trying to almost do like a proxy day, essentially at PwC, um, which is, I mean, it's a very interesting assessment center. I think the key is obviously to just be polite, do everything within the deadline, make sure the work's good. Um, and yeah, be polite be inclusive you know general team tasks at assessment centers you get lots of advice online from this but you know make sure your points are articulated you're including people in the conversation you're fairly balanced any criticism doesn't come across as like confrontational um and you'll be fine more or less again with like the roles like um the pathway i'm on obviously it's a bit harder to get into but i think it, again you, you're probably best off also just reaching out to some people so like if you were in this applying for this you could reach out to myself or just type in on linkedin again and you normally nine times out of ten get a response um so i've had i've had a lot of time good time at pwc but i'm looking probably i'll go back to well i'm gonna go back to hsbc in the summer um just because it's a bit more the deals are a bit bigger and the clients a bit bigger um but generally like the people at, at pwc are lovely um you know it's, it's really nice it's a nice place to work uh, and yeah i'm doing my chart they got me doing the chart accountancy exams alongside which is quite stressful when you're doing m a because you're trying to revise for that but again if you get that under your belt you're literally a chart accountant uh, probably the i would say the the best of the big four realistically um so again you know that's gonna stand you in good stead and now like even jp morgan are hiring people that have just got the chart accountancy straight from audit to come into their investment banking associate so it's you know if you're set on investment banking don't rule out the big four is what i'm trying to say um they've also pwc have asked me i've got some slides which can talk for at the end um but they've asked me to share this invite to their virtual park um where it allows you to talk to like pwc recruiters and stuff coming up so i'll just share the link in the chat there um so you can kind of sign up uh, I think it's in a few days time and yeah basically that's almost like it's like Facebook's metaverse you create an avatar you join PwC's virtual world and you kind of walk around in this virtual world using your mouse and your keyboard and then you can go up and have like conversations and like you stand in zones and it almost like adds you to like a zoom room um, and you can just chat and kind of learn about the different roles at, at PwC uh, what's I think there's some Argen stuff I don't know, Ollie. If do you want to talk through the Argen stuff, and then I'll quickly share some PwC slides. Yeah, no, thank you very much for that, Louis. Really, really insightful there. Um, I've obviously dropped in a couple of links in the chat there. Um, if everyone's got their phones out now, you can scan those QR codes, and that will take you directly to each insight that Louis just shared. So all the application processes that he's gone through for HSBC, Goldman, PwC. We've outlined and detailed, and uh, Louis very kindly written down each stage, exactly what questions are there, what are the waiting times. I know the waiting times are so important, you know, like if it's two or three weeks time when you're expected to hear from them um, and all the next steps there, including a couple of other links as well that helps Louis through his application process. And just to quickly show you what that looks like, um, I'll just get my screen up here. Thank you for sharing that, um, PwC, by the way, Louis. We've also got like a discussion group here. So you can ask some questions, uh, and I think we'll go over them in a minute just before you share more details on that, Louis. Uh, but just to give you an insight into what uh, Louis' content looks like, inside our insights, again, completely free access here with all the companies here. I'll probably go into your HSBC one, for example, Louis. So I click into HSBC. It's got Louis there under internships. And then here, look, you can see exactly what details are there. I know Louis shared some amazing experiences there. So if you've got anything, it's all on here online about what exactly which questions are there. Uh, but again, Louis, thank you very much for your time on, on that. Worries. Um, I'm just going to quickly share my screen on, um, actually, give me two seconds. I just need to make sure I've not got any confidential tabs open, uh, otherwise I'm going to get, <laughs> not going to go down well. Uh, give me two seconds, I'll just share my screen. So uh, can everyone see my screen? say yes or someone just unmute themselves yeah, we, can, yes. we can we can see it okay yeah. class all right cool so these are slides pwc's asked so 
these are kind of all the programs you got. So we've got graduate programs. Again, you know, you can just type in PDBC graduate program. There's like a link. It'll show you all the offices, all the roles. They'll kind of, you know, show you the different roles available and like a blurb about the role. Um, women and black talent in business. Um, this is very good. So PwC is really keen on diversity. And they also, I think they do some like mentoring as well on that. Um, so that's very good um, to get yourselves involved with if relevant to do work placement, similar to what I did at Goldman. Again, it's very good um, if you want to get, just get like a taste of different roles, like you want to do audit, you don't want to kind of commit to a grad scheme. And then summer internships, this is going to be obviously easier. So I should say the reason why there's like three or four grads, you no know, three grads that are in M&A is because a lot of people converted off the summer internship and the women stroke black um, talent and business programs. Um, so these are the key feeders and also the work placement as well. Um, so if you want to kind of get a role, your best bet is to apply to one of these three first. Um, you know, they are obviously competitive, but they're definitely worth it. Um, and I think as well, there's an initiative, I think it's called like 10,000 black interns, um, which is very good. So that's, I think, also feeds into this one at PwC, but that feeds into Goldman, uh, like uh, Credit Suisse, um, Morgan Stanley, lots of the big banks and other firms as well. So if that's applicable to you, definitely look into that because it's a very good scheme. I've had friends um, really reap the benefits of that. Um, again, key information, it's all basically, it's all on the website, including visa information. I do believe they, um, don't quote me, I think they, they sponsor um, visas, but they're very inclusive and basically just help you out. That then They're a very good employer. Um, Again, this is the selection process. So you do your application, your career unlocked, which is both that behavioral assessment and the app thing I mentioned. Then you do the video interview and the assessment day. So this is obviously, basically you're gonna pass this straight away as long as your information's right. Behavioral based assessment, again, you'll fly through that. It's the Arctic Shores app, which you'll, you'll get an invite to. That's the difficult one. So do your research for, again, video interview, um, know your stuff. Um, I would say on that because that also can be tricky if you just basically turn up, you don't know much about PwC, you're probably not going to get through. And then your assessment center, you know, goes without saying it's a final round. So, you know, you're in you're in the room with some high caliber people to say the least. So definitely make sure you're prepared. Um, the skills they look for. So again, it's just kind of your generic behavioral stuff, but you know, it's very good. So you like whole, wholesale leadership, business acumen, technical and digital, global inclusive relationships. Um, I don't really know what they mean by all this, I would say, but I think generally, if you want to do well at PwC, um, being inclusive, being kind of working hard and having a key attention to detail, probably the key things that are going to get you far in the organization. Um, you know, they're basically just looking for, are you smart, which obviously most all of you are university. Um, do you want the job? So prove it, you know, do your research. And then when you're on the job, make sure you're working hard and you're actually inclusive, like you're a decent person to work with. Do you know what I mean? Like make sure you're nice and friendly to others and, you know, you just help people out generally. I, that's, that's the, I think that's what this slide's really kind of drawing out. Um, and this is the general, you don't, I don't need to go over this application form. You know what a standard application form looks like. You probably all sent off plenty in your time. Um, yeah, again, the psychometric test. I, I personally think it's kind of tied in with an IQ test, um, specifically on the memory front. So make sure, again, pen and paper, you know, if there's like a memory, the squares. I What I remember doing is like drawing grids out. So like I would li literally, and then write an order. So like a one, two, three, four in all the boxes. So then repeat the order. You can just copy it from your paper. Um, it doesn't say you can't do that. It literally says you can have a pen and paper to hand. Um, and like personally, I think like, you know, <laughs> why wouldn't you do it if it's going to help you out? Um, you know, you could have the best memory in the world, but why take risks? Do you know what I mean? Um, again, general stuff you can find online. Um, yeah, I think this YPWC is the kind of main thing in this video interview. So really knowing the values and kind of the um, showing that you've actually read about the company is, is key really on this personally. Um, that And that would get you through most nine times out of 10. Um, I mean, there you go. Look, they've got all the 
useful stuff there. Research the employer, positive first impression. Um, and they've got an employability hub, which again, just kind of gives you a bit more insight into what they're looking for. Um, next steps, again. So have a look at this employability hub. Um, and then when you go through the process, just make sure you're looking. Apologies also, if you can see me looking here, I've got a monitor here and then I've got my laptop here. So I don't mean to be rude. Um, but yeah, thank you. And then oh, there's talent network there. It's a QR code there. If you want to quickly scan, um, I'll just leave that up for a second and then probably go through to a Q&A. Cool. Um, how do I stop sharing screen on this? Ah, stop sharing, being daft. Cool. Um, right. I don't know. Fantastic. Do you want to do Q&A? Yeah, no, no, that's uh, that's great. Thank you very much, Lou, for sharing that. Uh, fantastic on that side. And yeah, let's let's hop into into the Q and A. I know that uh, Christos and Amin from Clio will probably want to uh, sort of manage this as well. Um, I noticed that in the Clio group chat on our gen, there is a couple of people that have asked a question or two, which I'll just go first with that one, um, and then I can see that Chris has already got his hand up on on that side there as well. But um, yeah, guys, just put all your questions in the chat as well. Or if you want to raise your hand, um, you know, we'll get through to you. I think we have a good half an hour anyway, so there's plenty of questions on there. But one question that I had on the group chat, uh, Louis, which um, I'm just going to get up now, a girl called Ben uh, asked this, which was, is it easy to progress or climb up the hierarchy uh, in the finance field? And like, what were your experiences in that as well? Yeah, so I'd say within like organizations like the big four, like PwC and then the banks, there's like a literally a, a set program. So as long as you're performing the work, you, you, it's almost like you're just automatically going to pretty much get up to the rank of like at least a VP a bank. Um, within PwC, you're probably going to at least get up to a manager fairly, you know, in a steady fashion. It's all kind of clear, um, clear format um, above VP. I'll be honest, I think it's more about deal flow. You bring in clients, you know, does that translate into revenue? Um, which is a pretty obvious, makes sense because kind of up to VP level, you're basically handling the kind of, not admin, but like doing the intricacies of the deal. And then the MD, the reason the MD is on top is because he's, he knows the client, he's got the client relationship, he's bringing in the client deal, so to speak. Um, so to progress up to that, you know, it kind of is depending upon whether you bring in revenue. I'll also caveat that private equity, um, which probably you all have heard of as well, that is much less structured um, and seems a lot more political from what I've spoken to um, people about. Um, so a lot of people I know that associates at, say, Morgan Stanley at the minute, you know, they're getting asked, oh, do you want to go to Blackstone? And they're like, no. And the reason why is because if they go to Blackstone, they're going to go with literally the, probably some of the smartest people literally in the planet um, to run some of the biggest private equity deals. And there's no guaranteed kind of path up. You could just be like an associate there for like 10 years. So um, they're really kind of off put by that. So I'd say private equity, less structured, investment banks, big four, very steady structured, top levels, less so dependent on revenue. No, fantastic. Really insightful there, Louis. Um, I know that will apply to most people in this call. Uh, but thank you for that question as well, Ben. Uh, Krishi, I know you have your hand up, but I'll just, uh, you want to unmute? Yeah, and um, thank you so much. It's been really interesting and you've got a really good variety of experience and it's really nice to know like you're once in our shoes. So thank you for that. Um, I just wanted to ask, like, I'm going into my second year. I'm at Warwick at the moment. I just wanted to ask, like, in terms of like module selection, you know, there's obviously so many different paths you can take, but for like m &A transactions in particular, I wanted to know, would you suggest like taking accounting modules would be more beneficial or like financial kind of ones where you've got, you talk about risk, um, you know, beta and like those like more investment based. So what would you suggest in terms of that, just to know what would be more helpful? So, yeah. Yeah. So I would say firstly on that, thanks to the question. Um, I would say if you're specific on, on m and like PowerPoint and Excel, Excel specifically, being just a whiz on that. So at Lancaster, they had literally modules on like the advanced intricacies of Excel. Um, so that was very useful. And again, even if you were in like a sales trading role, just knowing Excel, and I mean, literally inside out, so you could code functions. So, you know, you can like create macros and you can create like equal sum. So you could literally write, like you can create your own custom kind of functions. So like equals, you know, whatever I want, like golf, and it does a random function. Being able to do that is like super useful. 
um, just as generic being in finance. And then, yeah, your accounting modules are um, super useful specifically to m and uh, I mean, like if I'm doing a DCF analysis, I'm building a free statement module uh, model first and I've got to understand all the revenue forecasts I'm putting in and then how that's going to affect all the key line items. And then that feeds through to my actual DCF tab and that spits out the answer. Now, if I didn't have a clue what a balance sheet is, I'm stuck. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, obviously you learn stuff on the desk, but the way they treat it in the investment banks is you kind of almost treat it like you're just this genius. So they give you like a week's training to just learn it, um, which can be quite overwhelming. So if they're like, right, here's a DCF and you've never looked at a balance sheet or profit and loss statement before, you're going to feel very, very out of your depth very quickly. So if you can get modules under your belt where you know all of that already, um, and it counts towards your degree, as long as there's not other interesting things you're missing out on, I'd definitely do it if you're going to be um, in the finance fit sphere, so to speak. No, Lou, that's, uh, again, fantastic question and uh, even better response on that side. And again, Excel is such a crucial part and I can't emphasize that enough like Louis did as well. Learning Excel and the functions there are going to help you a long way, especially in finance careers. Uh, Ali, I know you have your hand up. Do you want to unmute yourself and you can ask a question? Yeah, thank you. Um, so thank you first for all the information. Um, I'm a second year student, economics and finance student. I'm doing a placement next year, undergraduate placement at PwC Deals um, in Belfast. And um, so my contract starts at like September until August. And I was thinking I wanted to do a summer internship at like an investment bank to see how it is there before like making my decision if I want to work at PwC or investment banking. However, I know the summer internship starts at like July time. So yeah. I was wondering if like, how am I supposed to um, approach this situation? Should I tell my manager that I want to leave earlier or how should I like inform them on the situation? If you get what I mean. Yeah. So fancy question. Do not do anything until you've got like a hard, investment banker offer in place because it's so easy like even if you sign the contract to join in the summer you can like if you say no they can fill that spot probably within 30 minutes like literally there's that there's that much demand um from students to get in so don't worry about fobbing off the bank just secure the investment banking offer in terms of once you've got the offer um that's when you need to kind of build out your connections um within pwc um so you would talk to maybe maybe like so at pwc the senior associates they're the best to ask because you're they're going to be not your boss but kind of the mini boss um the big boss is going to be the manager on most of the transactions so make some friends with senior associates and just understand kind of some of the politics at play and then once you've got a bit of briefing on that um definitely kind of mention it to your manager before you talk to your career coach about look i'm really enjoying it here i want to i've got an offer for investment banking i want to try it and just be like really open and honest just pick your manager and get their thoughts and then want you know if they're happy with it i would go with them to hr because then hr they can go right you can cut it short you go and do your stint but if investment bank isn't for you you've not left it frosty at pwc so if you want to go back your manager's going to want to take you back if you get what i mean um, you don't want to burn any bridges at all. You want to be as flexible. Um, so that's that's what I would say. I don't know. Have you got any further questions on that? or is No, that... no that's great. That, that was my question. Yeah, that, cool. that, that explains it really well. Thank oh, you fantastic. so much. No, brilliant. I'm just reading here. We've got loads and loads of questions in the chat. I'm going to pick a couple of ones which uh, are more relevant to people. But before I do that, I know, Anish, you've just put your hand up now if you want to unmute yourself. Anish? <laughs> if not i'll go on to the questions in the chat i think he's muted anish i just saw your mute go on hello, hello. are you able to hear me hi uh hi uh so basically uh my question is you know uh i have i actually wanted to work on the you know sales and trading division of you know the investment banks basically the trading uh the trading division of uh, you know the many of the investment banks like barclays goldman sachs and that all so could you provide some tips on, you know, how to break into that sector, you know, yeah. uh, regarding the application tips and, you know, what, what to make in the CV and cover letter regarding that. Yeah. Where, where are you based? You're based in the UK? Uh, currently I'm in India, but okay. uh, I'm going to come in uh, UK in September 2020. I'm going to pursue a master of finance from university of Bath. I see. I see. Um, yeah. So I would say definitely when, well, when you come, I would network with people, 
um, on LinkedIn, like people within um, the train divisions, speci specifically if you're a master's student, because um, there's less of like the spring weeks and all of those kind of easier things to get involved with. So network first, do some coffee chats and get your name about, you know, about. Um, and then obviously in your, in your CV, you're going to want to build over that year some experience. So like amplify trading, do some events, which is very good specific for sales and trading where they specifically do it for university students. So I'd get that on the CV. I think they also offer some like paid um, courses as well and they're partnered with Morgan Stanley so I would look at doing that if specifically if I want to do sales and trading um, in terms of catering it you know kind of say you know you're going to outline at the top you're going to have your education experience and then you're going to follow it through with kind of all the relevant roles and experience so that's where you'd bring in like your amplified trading and then other work experience you've got and then below that put your skills um, within sales and trading um, the specific skills they're going to look for is obviously your general office stuff, but Python, um, because most of the time you're just running scripts a lot of the time to automate your stuff. So like stock falls like this, um, what do we do? Um, because a lot of the time, I don't know if you know, trading, sales and trading in most banks now don't have what's called a prop desk post 2008, which is where they actually look to make money like actually buying and selling stuff when you get a trader and investment bank now say at goldman's all they're doing is a market making role which is basically without kind of going into the fancy details providing liquidity to the market so that basically means that bill blogs just turns up and wants to buy 100 shares of tesla they facilitate that transaction they've got the 100 shares in tesla on hand they don't actually go to the market anymore and buy 100 shares of Tesla thinking, right, I'm going to do a swing trade. I'm going to hold this for like two weeks. It's going to make me 20% going to cash out. Um, so that, I mean, I think also you want to be clear on what role you want. Sales is going to be way easier within the sales and trading just because it requires less expertise. The trading, they're going to specifically want numerical skills in the Python and they just take less because it's market making. If you want a prop desk role, uh, you're going to need to have like some sort of maths experience as well and experience probably prior trading like go try and get some experience with like i don't even know like a, a very small shop that's going to be doing some sort of prop function and then you know realistically though the prop the proper prop desks are looking for a phd if i'm honest um so you know but maybe if you wanted to do prop desk consider a phd probably what i'd say thank you thank you for the news Fantastic. No, brilliant. And um, just on the note really there on um, sort of getting experiences, even if you don't really have that many or like what experiences to have that will help you in there. Someone's asked in the chat here, Burke has asked, uh, do you have any advice for students with minimum intern experience to stand out in the sector that is favours those with substantial amount of experience? Because I know that this is a big issue for a lot of people breaking into the industry. So Louis, what would you advise there? Yeah, well, you're going to have to sort of match them or you're going to have to beat them on the network. So network literally just putting coffee chats with people like me you can have a half an hour call with me most nine times out of ten if i'm not busy i'll put time in with the weekend do all the time with students students reach out to me um chop shop and then when you make an application to pwc they're like do you know anyone there you can just put my name and then it that stands out your application and then also if you've got i've heard of cases where people have literally reached out to like a managing director that's gone to their uni they and alongside other conversations they've had numerous coffee chats the manager director goes, you know what, I'm actually hiring, I like you, I want you in the process. And then they literally just <laughs> kick off the HR process, tell the head of HR, I want this person, put them in a final round right now. Um, so networking is like super key. It's like cost, there's, it doesn't cost you anything either. It's literally a, like takes you 20 seconds to write a message and a request on LinkedIn. So it's just an easy win. Um, trying to match on experience is literally any insight day, anything and everything, just like apply for. Um, relevant in the field and then make sure you're busy in the summer like I remember like even if you can't get office work just make sure you're trying to work like hours so like whether you're in a warehouse or you're a bar just make sure you're working um, just shows that you actually you know because you, you can always bluff those skills um, but I would, I would I think an office job is not too difficult to get um, you know just reach out to a recruitment firm just take any summer temp job you can get Lots of people go on summer holidays in the summer. They need someone to kind of fill in and do some like random customer stuff on Excel. Um, you're having that on your CV is going to look good versus the person that's got nothing. Do you know what I mean? 
No, 100%. And uh, Louis, following up from there, the importance of networking. LinkedIn is a fantastic tool. And guys, like I think this was already mentioned in this call today, but nine times out of 10, if you drop a message on someone on LinkedIn who's worked at the firm, like people see Goldman or HSBC, they're going to respond. And uh, our gen, we have an article on like three message templates that basically have proven, tried, successful message templates that have managed to get to people like managing directors at Morgan Stanley. Uh, so definitely worth following up from that. Uh, I've just seen in here another question, Louis, uh, from Mustafa. Is it integral to have a spring week to secure a summer internship? You've just mentioned there, for example, that breaking into the industry, it's good to get that opportunity in the summer. But like, is it an integral part of like the entire career? Or is there another way to get in there rather than actually doing that summer internship or that spring week? Well, so basically, don't do a spring week or a summer and try and get into investment banking. Is that? Well, I mean, twofold. I think the question is summer internship, or sorry, spring week into a summer internship. First thing, and then the second thing is, I think, I think for everyone really is, do you actually need that internship at all? Um, I would say it's a difficult one. So yeah, most of the time you do need the internship in some form. Um, yeah, I, I would say yeah, I, yeah, I would say. 100% you need some sort of internship experience um, in some sort of bank or something. I mean, there is ways, though, to get in. So, for example, I don't know, I'm a master's student. I have nothing, no spring week, no summers, no placement years, no anything. Um, that's where I'm basically going to go through the painful process of basically applying to, like, roles that I'm not going to even want, at, like, jobs, you know, like, places you've never even heard of, like a credit analyst, like a boutique I'm, no, no one's ever heard of i use that that leverages me then the credit analyst to get like some sort of advisory role again at a tiny shop and then after that kind of tiny role at a tiny shop and then can use that to get slightly bigger maybe it's not and maybe it's like an elite boutique or something and then bang them in um but again it's a long way because you've got to build up your experience um, and then so if you've got nothing networking becomes most key as well because that opens the doors um you know yeah. but you're gonna have to you have to get the experience that the the boot like the the investment banks of the world need they're only gonna hire someone that's got experience and that's why they run the programs because they basically go here's all these smart students they haven't got experience we're basically gonna give them experience and then hopefully have them as workers for us now outside of that process that's where they're literally looking for why why should we hire you you know what what you're going to bring to the table so to speak that's fantastic. No, thank you, Louis. And again, the theme of networking there is super, super important. I know that working in boutiques, you're going to be exposed to those sort of like partners or more of the manager side of things rather than entering a huge firm uh, where you'd be treated more like a number. So those boutiques or smaller shops are definitely worth it there. I know, Mustafa, you put your hand up. Do you want to unmute yourself and ask a question? Hi. Uh, yeah, I just written the question in the chat. And I just wanted to clarify and I uh, thank you very much for the response you gave before. But I'm a first year student at Warwick, currently studying PPE, and I'm kind of struggling with acquiring a spring week as of current. And obviously that kind of worries me because I want to apply for summer internships next year. So what can I do between now and September to give myself the best chance of getting a summer internship? Yeah, so cheers the question. Literally, if you can't get a spring, go for a summer um, or some sort of work experience at like anyone in finance, really. Um, try for advisory so you can literally just like type in uh, into like google like buzzwords and then type and click companies and then just see what companies come up and like even if they're tiny they've only got 50 employees ceo pop them a message um there was a list floating around i'll see if i can find it for our gen where it was a list of every single fca registered firm in the uk and when i was society president i handed out to my guys and if they didn't have anything, even if they didn't have any summers, uh, they literally just literally cold emailed the, the company with like a script that they had, just tailored it to the company and their CV. And like, I think all of them got something like literally whether it was a grad role or whether it was a summer, like kind of a, a summer, they don't do summers, but it's a summer, they're doing four weeks. They're not paid much, they're paid maybe like, I don't know, a few hundred quid. They're now, because of the back of that, I remember specifically one lad, second year, didn't have anything. Um, and he did that, got four weeks, did barely anything. But you could say he did this advisory, uh, worked at an advisory shop. He's just had an interview for like 
um, like, Mc, like McKinsey, Bain type firms, like the top, those, you know, those type of firms for consulting and had IB interviews just because he's, he's got on his CV this random boutique no one's ever heard of. And he's done four weeks. And all that was, he cold emailed 100 firms. That was it. And he got one. So that would, that would be, you just kind of put the hard yards. The guy who used to run the site before me, for his spring, he didn't get anything. And for, for like some sort of experience over the summer, he wrote 250 emails and got something and then networked his way into his current role as a um, investor on the buy side. Um, so it can be done. It's going to be painful though, networking and cold emailing, but it can be done. Um, but again, these guys were at Lancaster, which is not um, as prestigious as Warwick. And also they were doing roles that are like nothing to do with finance. Like I think history or something. So PPE, you know, that's going to, it's much more applicable to finance. So I wouldn't stress as well. No. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. I know, um, Tane, you've raised your hand. Do you want to ask a question? Oh, hi there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hi there. Um, thank you for really insightful so far. I'm just wondering about, you mentioned Glassdoor in terms of, sort of preparing resources to train um, for technicals or for assessment centres. What are the best resources? And in regards to Glassdoor specifically, what should we sort of search on Google to try and get it up? Yeah. So, so for Glassdoor, say I had like Goldman Sachs internal audit placement year, I literally type in Goldman Sachs internal audit placement year, um, Glassdoor, bang, see what comes up. Nothing like that, Goldman Sachs internal audit analyst questions, Glassdoor, bang. Um, do you know what I mean? Just variations of that and then see what search results you get. And then like you might get like a VP or whatever, but like there's still going to be some questions there which are generic. So I just jot down and make sure I'm kind of roughly aware of answering everything. Even if it's like a VP level interview, there'll be some questions there where I go, I, I don't have a, you know, they're not, I know they're not going to expect me to know that extent, but that kind of field I can look into. Um, and then what was, the, what was the second part of the question? Oh, it was just in regards to sort of other resources that are yeah. good in preparation. Type in mergers and inquisitions, investment banking question guide. It's got like 400 questions. I think it came from Numora as HR originally. 400 questions of every question they can ask you in IB. Um, so I use that for like my investment banking interviews and it gets you very far. It is hard work because you've got to memorize 400 questions and answers. Well, 400 answers to questions. Um but it gets you kind of thinking about, about that. And then Wall Street Oasis, as well as Argen, is very useful for like um, general insight of when stuff's opening. I think it's going to, Argen as it develops, is going to be better than Wall Street Oasis. But what's basically happened is Wall Street Oasis gives some good tidbits, but Argen's kind of like developing it all in. But for now, until it's fully integrated, Wall Street Oasis, you can see like, um, you know, when stuff's opening, um, and then sometimes they put bits of advice, but again, it's not really a very good platform. Hence why our gen is, uh, <laughs> doing so well at the minute. Um, so yeah. Thank you for the kind words. And yeah, the guys, like all the questions when it comes to applying, especially in finance, although we're a very, very young platform, we're just about to start, um, you know, Louis on there and Cleo's on there. We've got about 4,000 members and about 40 company insights. Um, and we're now making some big steps towards that. So you'll see in the next sort of 12 months that all the questions that you can think of for very, very specific insights, whether it's internal audit, HSBC in Vietnam, you'll get an insight for it. So you'll uh, keep your eyes peeled on that one. Uh, but yeah, I know that Ed, you've got a question. Uh, you raised your hand on there. Do you want to unmute yourself? Oh, yeah. So my question to you, uh, Louis, was I'm currently on placement at uh, Deloitte. And then I was going to ask, how did you find um, applying to stuff on the side as well as doing actual work like because <laughs> like yeah, doing yeah. work for like nine like um hours a day or ten like hours a day you know it's kind of hard and then trying to not do like uh, applications and interviews and stuff how did you find the whole process yourself yeah so uh, as you know it's grim <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um the weekend the weekend's key and having a kind of idea of what you want to apply for in a list is very key try and knock out all of the kind of laborious kind of, um, you know, application process form rubbish at the weekend, because that's most time intensive. Um, 
and flowing on your your email get that out early doors and then yeah if you have like video interviews and stuff you just got to do it in the week um i remember doing stuff at like one in the morning i'd be honest like one in the morning sat there thinking i'm going to goulburn in five hours <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is grim um, yeah. but you have to do it you have to do it you just have to do it you have to just suck it up unfortunately wish there was a way where you could say oh you can time travel this way but unfortunately it's not um, yeah, no, it is uh, very grim i can't lie but yeah, yeah. i appreciate that no, thank you for the question, Ed. I appreciate that it's five already. Louis, are you free for another 10 minutes? Or yeah, you... yeah, I'm happy to carry on, yeah. No, fantastic. Let's, um, guys, if you have any other questions, just raise your hand now. I'll deal the ones with the ones who are raising the hand. Um, and then those who are in the chat, I'll just share something later on. And then Christos from Clear will finish everything up. But uh, Mubarak, do you want to unmute yourself and uh, you can ask your question? Yeah, um, hello. Um, hi, hi, Louis. Um, hi, yeah. My question is, is that... Um, would you say like going back to cold emailing and um, you know smaller shops or smaller firms essentially? Would you say cold cold calling them? Would that be an effective method to I don't know maybe reaching out to the um, HR um, team or someone that's um, you could like, do, but most of the time the secretary that gets it is just gonna like just put the phone down. That's why I always think if you can get like the email of the CEO or someone senior up nicely presented and you've looked at their LinkedIn, you tailored it to them a bit, and you've got a CV. Um, it just makes it easier. I mean, you could try cold calling, but nine times out of ten, that's why they got a secretary as a gatekeeper. The, gate, the secretary's just going to go, sorry, we don't do that way. You know, email us or something like that and put the phone down. Um, if you know them, obviously you can do a phone call. That's going to be more effective. But if you if you just cold outreach emails, nine times out of ten, it's going to be way more effective, I've found. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, definitely. And Ali, uh, another question from yourself, if you want to unmute yourself. Oh, I think he just looks uh, like he, he had a... Uh... Like say, he had that question as well. Uh, no, fantastic. Uh, well, guys, I know a lot of you put it in the chat already. And uh, I know, uh, Christos, you want to finish up on here. But um, inside the Clio group chat on side our gen, uh, we have a discussion board here. And Christos has very kindly just created that, where you can ask your questions in here. I know, Ben, your question was in here. So any questions, just drop them in here and I'll forward them on to Louis or Louis, you'll you get a response on there. And also the entire Clio team uh, who have amazing experiences in the finance industry, they'll be able to help you with that as well. Uh, so any questions on there, you can just put them in there and you can uh, reply to that as well. And I've put a link in the chat for you just now as well. But yeah, I'll hand it over to, to Christos. Yeah, thanks so much for that, Oliver. Yeah, I recommend everybody sign up for our gen and you can follow us as well, follow our Clio page and you can get all the amazing insights that Oliver's been sharing throughout the call. Um, I want to thank Louis as well for being here to volunteer to speak for us today. And he's given really valuable advice. And all of you, as Oliver said at the start, have taken the first steps in your career to really giving yourself an advantage in the financial industry. Um, so we're going to be bringing this to a close now. And I'd like to thank all of you for coming and um, have a good day everyone uh, it's been great having you here and good luck in the future uh, if you have any more sorry i was gonna say if you have any more questions like message on linkedin or yeah and you can also message on our gym there's a great platform there to just send messages and you can get them answered afterwards thank you everyone um Fantastic take care thank you very much thanks thank for your time much.